Welcome to another session of electrochemistry. Today we look into EMF measurement by Pogendorf's compensation principle. Before we move on, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done yet. Please do drop your comments and share and like the video if you like after watching. First we'll understand what is electromotive force. When there is a difference in potential between the two electrodes, the current flows from the electrode with a higher potential to the electrode with a lower potential. We can actually measure voltage or EMF just by using a voltmeter or even a multimeter. But we are going to use a potentiometer. We will see what is the difference between the two. First, why we should measure EMF using Pogendorf's compensation principle instead of using a voltmeter or a multimeter. We look into the drawbacks of measuring EMF using voltmeter. That is, when we are measuring the voltage using a voltmeter, a chemical reaction will occur in the cell. During the chemical reaction, some current is used and this will alter the EMF. That is, we are not going to get the accurate EMF. And not only that, when the current flows, a small portion of EMF is used to overcome the internal resistance of the cell. So, because of these two reasons, we are not going to get the actual EMF when we measure using a voltmeter or a multimeter. So, a small amount of EMF or voltage will be less than the actual EMF when we use a voltmeter. But when we are using a potentiometer bridge by Pogendorf's compensation principle, there is very little or almost no flow of electricity in this method during the measurement. That is why we are using a potentiometer. I think all of you are familiar with this uh, potentiometer. That is EMF. We are going to see how EMF is measured of an unknown cell using Pogendorf's compensation principle. This potentiometer bridge, also called as a meter bridge, actually has a high resistant 10 meter wire. It's a long high resistant 10 meter wire from A to B. It's a continuous wire. Since we cannot have a long wire, we are actually winding up into 1 meter length into 10 meters. That's why we call it as a meter bridge also. First, I think you're familiar with the circuit diagram. Here in the circuit diagram, you see that AB represents the long high resistance wire. This is AB, this 10 meter wire. Okay, we'll see the circuit above. A is connected to C, that is the storage battery or storage cell, which is then connected to a rheostat, which is used for varying the resistance if required. Then to B, that is A to battery, battery to rheostat, rheostat to B. Now we'll come to the potentiometer bridge. A to battery, battery to rheostat, and Rio start to B. This is how we need to connect. We will see the lower part. From same A, we are going to connect to, to DPDT switch. That is double pole, double throw switch. Then to a galvanometer and a sliding contact that is the jockey. Come here. From A to DPDT switch. That is double pole, double throw switch. Why we say double pole, double throw is we are having two poles here. And we can throw the switch on both the sides. Now it's thrown this side. We can throw it even this side. Whichever side we are throwing, that particular cell is going to be active. And then from DPDT switch to the galvanometer, galvanometer to the sliding contact that is jockey. Now we see that on both the sides, we are connecting one side to the standard cell that is a known EMF and the other side to the unknown cell. Here we are seeing this is the unknown cell. And this is the standard cell. That is western cadmium cell is normally used as a standard cell. When we call a cell as a standard cell, if you look at, it has a EMF, constant EMF. And its EMF should not change with temperature. That is, whichever part of the world we are or whichever season we are measuring, the EMF that is 1.018 volts should be almost, it should be very, very, very negligible. The change in EMF should be very negligible with the change in the temperature. Then we call it as a standard cell. The commonly used standard cell is Western Cadmium cell. I think now you are familiar with the connections. We have the circuit diagram which is normally seen. This is how you connect it in your lab. We will see how it works now. Once the connections are over, you should check whether the connections are Correct. For that, you should uh, place the sliding contact that is jockey in the first wire and the last wire. Both should show opposite side deflection. If one is showing a, a right side deflection, the other should show left side deflection. This says that your connections are correct. 
in case it shows the same side deflection then you should change the poles of the battery or a galvanometer if you have not connected it correctly if you change the poles the connections will go correct once you have checked for the connections now you need to slide the jockey uh, along the length a b to find a point where the galvanometer shows zero deflection that is we call it as a null deflection point or we call that length as the balancing length so we need to slide the jockey to identify the null deflection point in the galvanometer so now we have thrown the switch to the unknown cell now the unknown cell is active and we are determining the null deflection point and here d is the null deflection point here with the jockey we have identified now what is ad does length ad actually represents the fall in the emf in the storage cell which is compensated by the emf of the unknown cell okay that is ad so emf of unknown cell is proportional to ad now we throw the switch towards the western cadmium cell and search for a new point that is null deflection point for the standard cell and we slide the jockey to identify another point ad dash now ad dash represents the balancing length which represents the fall in the emf in the storage cell c which is compensated by the emf of the standard cell so ad dash or es the emf of the standard cell is proportional to the length that is ad dash we'll see here how to determine the emf using pojendorf's compensation principle of an unknown cell so eu that is emf of the unknown cell is proportional to ad that is the balancing length and es that is the emf of the standard cell is proportional to ad dash that is the balancing length of the standard cell and uh, we are dividing equation 1 and 2 so the proportionality sign goes off just to compare eu by es is equal to ad by ad dash now we see that we know three parameters here that is es we know that western cadmium cell the emf is 1.018 and ad and ad dash we are measuring the balancing length so only the unknown quantity is the emf of the unknown cell once you uh, take this es to the right hand side you have eu is equal to es into ad by ad dash this is how you determine the emf using pojendorf's compensation principle where you don't have the loss in emf as in the case of voltmeter or a multimeter and here we get the accurate emf of the unknown cell by the solve for the session let us meet in another session until then bye bye don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done yet please drop in your comments and share and like the video Bye